Hey everyone, and welcome back to our electronics tutorial series. My name is Aaron from AX Electronic, and today we are going to continue on to the topic of diodes with diode max and min circuits. So diode max and min circuits are exactly what they sound like. They're going to help you find the maximum or the minimum value in a set of signals. Okay, so if you have a whole bunch of signals and you want to know which one is the maximum, these diode circuits are going to help you out. Counter or in the opposite direction, if you want to find which one is the minimum, these diodes are also going to help you do just that. So let's go ahead and get started. So up first, I have ourselves a diode max circuit, and we're gonna talk a little bit about it and explain maybe what's happening, okay? So let's talk a little bit about it and let's explain. So we have two diodes here, and each of them is connected to this voltage source, V1 and V2, okay? And then we also have this current limiting resistor here, because remember, these diodes are pretty much short circuits whenever they start conducting. So we need to have something to limit this current. That way we don't have way too much current flowing into our circuits. So this could be something like a 1K or 1K or a 10K. doesn't really matter. It's just there to limit the current. And it's also there to do what's called pull up or pull down. In this case, it is pulling our signal down to ground. Okay, That way it's going to let current flow in this direction. It's going to let current flow in this direction. It's going to pull whatever our signal is down to ground. Okay, so let's start off by uh, making a couple of assumptions. Okay, so we know that these diodes, whenever they're conducting, they are going to have a 0.7 volt drop across them. Okay, that's a pretty solid assumption that we can make that they're going to have a 0.7 volt drop across them in the forward direction. And let's just throw in a couple of uh, random numbers here. Okay, so let's throw in a couple of random numbers. So let's say V1 is 5 volts and V2 is. 3 volts. Now we know which one is the maximum, it's 5 volts, but we have to figure out a way to make this work with electronics. So we're going to try and see if maybe something is happening here that we can try and identify which one is the maximum. So we've got 5 volts and 3 volts. So let's start down here at the bottom. If we have 3 volts here, and this is conducting current, if we assume that it's conducting current because we don't know, then it would have a 0.7 volt drop and that would mean that we would have 2.3 volts here. Now let's do the same thing at the top. So if we have five volts here and we assume that we are conducting current through this diode, then we would have 4.3 volts here, okay? Now, this doesn't exactly make sense because these two are tied together. So these are the same node, right? They're tied together with just this little wire that we're gonna assume is a short circuit. So they can't both have, uh, they can't both have this same voltage drop, okay? So pretty much something has gotta give. So let's take a look at this little one down here, okay? So if we have 2.3 volts here, that means that we would have 2.3 volts on the top as well if we assume that this three volt one is conducting current. So if we assume that it's letting current conduct here and we're only having 2.3 volts, then that means we would have to have 2.3 volts here as well. And that would mean that there is actually a voltage drop of 2.7 volts across that diode. So that means the current should be conducting and that would actually be a whole lot of current. Okay, so that's kind of starting to not make sense, right? Because we said before, we're gonna assume that they can have a 0.7 volt drop in the forward direction and then whatever drop they want in the reverse direction. So this one doesn't really make too much sense, okay? So let's maybe back it up a little bit. So let's back all this up. So before we assumed that three volts was the one that was making it through. So we assumed that there were 2.3 volts here. But we said that led to some problems. So let's try it again with V1. So if we take a look at V1, if we have current conducting through here, we're gonna have 4.3 volts. Okay, so we're gonna have 4.3 volts. Now, if we have 4.3 volts here, that must mean we have 4.3 volts down at the bottom. Now, is there a way for this to make sense where instead of having uh, a 0.7 volt drop in this direction, is there a way for us to make sense of it, of there being a voltage drop in the opposite direction, like a 1.3 volt drop in the reverse direction? And the answer is yes, because diodes can have whatever voltage drop they want in the reverse direction, as long as it's less than that breakdown. Okay, so this is actually perfectly fine. This is allowed and makes a lot of sense. Okay, so we know that there is no current flowing in this direction and there is current flowing. Oh, there's no current in that direction and there is current flowing through here. So this is a way that it makes sense. Okay, so what we can see is that this circuit is actually finding the maximum of these two signals. So if we call this our V out, then we can say V out is going to be the max 
So the maximum of all the inputs minus that diode drop, 0.7 volts, okay? So I encourage you to put this into LT Spice and simulate it. That way you can kind of see for yourself that this is exactly how it works. But this is a circuit that is helping us find the maximum of a couple of signals, okay? So let's say that we have two inputs, okay? So let's say we have one input that looks like this. Actually, let's make it all positive. So let's say we have one input that looks like this and another input, let me switch colors, that looks like this, okay? So it maybe peaks right here. And I'll just say these are our inputs. If we take a look at our outputs, what we're gonna see is that our output starts off with the max, okay? So it's taking the max and that's that red line. But then once this blue one takes over here, then that's going to be the max again. And the same thing, the red line takes over again and that becomes our maximum. So now we've got a diode max circuit, okay? So we're finding the maximum of all of these input signals. Now, the next one is going to be our diode minimum circuit, okay? So our diode minimum circuit. So this is gonna be trying to find the minimum of all of these input signals. Now, you might notice that this one is a little bit different. I'll switch back to my red. This one's a little bit different. So before we had a pull down resistor and that's because we knew that current was flowing in this direction and we wanted it to flow down to ground, right? Because current always goes to the lowest potential. So we're gonna assume that these are higher. So we're gonna assume that these are higher and we want them to flow down since they're finding a max. For our minimums, we're gonna assume that they are lower. So we need current to flow from VDD through a resistor and then through one of these two diodes, okay? So this is gonna be a little bit different, which is why we have a pull up resistor instead of that pull down resistor. All right, so let's try this same problem. So let's say that V1 is once again, five volts and V2 is three volts. And let's assume that our VDD is just 10 volts. So we can have numbers for everything. Now, let's try a couple of different cases, okay? So we know that, like we said, these are going to have, oops, that's the wrong direction. So these are gonna have a voltage drop of 0.7 volts in the forward direction. Okay, so if this five, if this five has a 0.7 volt drop in the forward direction, then that means we would have 5.7 volts right here. And if we have 5.7 volts there, that means we have 5.7 volts here, and that corresponds to a not 0.7, but 2.7. Okay, so that 2.7 volt voltage drop means we're gonna have like tens of amps of current, which is not a good thing, okay? And that also is probably not realistic, okay? So we know that maybe something a little fishy is happening here. So maybe we're not doing the right thing. So maybe it's not actually 5.7 volts appearing on the output. So let's go back a little bit. Let's back step once again. And instead of assuming that there is a 0.7 volt drop here, that this one is the one that's conducting, let's assume that it is the three volt diode that's conducting. So a 0.7 volt drop means that there would have to be 3.7 volts on this node. That means there's 3.7 volts here. Now, if we take a look, there has to be a 0.7 volt drop, but there's not. There's five volts on one side and 3.7 volts on the other. So we're trying to push current in this direction, but it's blocked by that diode. So because we have that blocked by the diode, we are only getting the minimum. Okay, so these diodes are helping us find the minimum of the two. So this circuit is going to have a fun, or it's going to have a V out is equal to the minimum. Okay, so it's going to be the minimum of all the input signals plus that 0.7 volt drop. Okay, and again, put this in LT Spice just so you can see that this is exactly how it works. Okay, so it's going to be the minimum of these voltage or voltages plus that 0.7 volt drop. So once again, if we go back to that old example that we had, where we have some circuits or some signals that look like this, so that's one of our inputs. And if I switch to blue, this is another of our inputs, okay? So what our circuit is gonna do is it's going to find the minimum of these two. Let me make sure I extend those out just so it's clear. So if we take a look at the output, so our output, at the very beginning, which of these is the minimum? Well, it's the blue line. So it's gonna be the blue line down here at zero volts. It's gonna be the blue line down here at zero volts. And it's gonna continue going up, or it's gonna, uh, excuse me, it's gonna continue being the minimum because it's still less than the red line. 
And then right about here, that red line becomes the minimum. So it's gonna start coming down like this. We're still following the red, still following the red. And then once it gets overtaken here again, once the blue becomes the minimum, we're gonna follow that blue the rest of the way down. And then we're sticking with zero. Okay. So this is like the exact opposite. And what I want you guys to remember is that it can be a little bit confusing which is max and which is min. So the best thing to remember here is that min equals n. So min is in, they're pointing in toward your signals, okay? So if you have a diode, like let's say you have a signal, and you have a diode pointing inward, so that triangle is pointing in, and this is going to be a min circuit. And max is just the opposite, max is pointing outward, okay? So just remember, min is in, and max is out, okay? And that's the best way to remember which of these are your minimum circuits and which ones are your maximum. Alrighty, so that is everything that I have for you guys. Oop. Actually, no, that wasn't. So. Uh, we actually do have one little application that we can do here. Okay, so we're going to talk about having batteries in parallel. So having batteries in parallel actually lets you supply more current. So batteries are rated for a specific current, so they can maybe only provide one amp. So if you need two amps, you could put two batteries in parallel. But there's a little bit of a trick, okay? So batteries aren't all built, oops, batteries aren't all built exactly the same, and their cell voltages might be a little bit different. So if you have a three volt battery, this one could be 3 volts, and this one might be 2.9, especially if they're maybe charged differently or things like that. So what happens is that this 3 volts is going to supply current to our load here, to the resistive load, but it's also going to provide current into this battery, okay, because there's a voltage drop here. This is 3 volts, this is 2.9 volts, so it's going to try, or that current is going to flow to the uh, spots with less potential. So that current is going to flow into our battery in the opposite direction, and this is not a good thing. Not all batteries are built to be charged in this way, so some might even explode. So this is definitely not a good thing and something that you want to prevent. And one of the ways that we can do that is by using these diodes. So using these diodes kind of in this max configuration ensures that whichever one is at its maximum is going to provide current, okay? And if it tries to charge this other one, it's not going to happen. So only the one that's at its maximum can provide current and that keeps these batteries nice and balanced. If you want to think of it in a simpler manner, it just makes it to where current cannot flow into these batteries. So it keeps them nice and well protected, okay? So this is a good application of these diodes as it relates, as it relates to max and min. Now, this stuff is a little bit different and it might be a little bit hard to understand. So if you do have questions, please leave them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer them. Other than that, if you do enjoy this content, please like, give me a thumbs up and subscribe because it does keep me very highly motivated. Other than that, I will see you guys next time.